Thanks for joining me. Hope this is good and fun for you. I'm going to try and go quick. I have a lot to talk about. Usual. Scribes. We're going to talk about scribes. Very popular in the New Testament. Really, really, uh, pretty a lot of pretty many scribes here. In this case, uh, this is a third question that came to Jesus when he had come to Jerusalem. Okay, so here we got uh, the testing of Jesus. Now, I don't think that. Well, this is actually somewhat of a test, but it was I think lighter than the other ones. The other ones are really seems to be hostile. This guy doesn't seem to be too hostile. But in Matthew's gospel, this is Matthew chapter 22 it said that this guy tempted jesus he tested jesus but mark didn't mention that at all here's his testing of jesus it's in jerusalem and these guys he probably was from the sanhedrin he probably was a pharisee because he agreed with what jesus said to the sadducees he thought that was a great answer probably a pharisee not sure the sadducees had scribes too and the other groups had scribes who has a scribe we'll get to that later hold on <laughs> now we have three stories as a review we did the pharisees and herodians when they were challenging him on taxes taxation and then we also have what we just studied with which is a lot of studies there sadducees and the resurrection they didn't believe in the resurrection pharisees did this guy evidently did too notice i said guy it's only one in this case this is the only time since he's come to Jerusalem, where it wasn't a whole group. They all came as groups, but this guy was by himself. Of course, people were around him listening to Jesus. Everyone was crowding around Jesus a lot because, wow, his teachings, his, his miracles, his, his face. I'm sure he was just full of joy and also full of sadness and you know all of the heartfelt stuff that God had in him. So this is a scribe, and he comes... This scribe, this teacher of the law comes and he's asking for an interpretation. What does the Bible mean? Now, I want to stop right there and just beg you, encourage you, plead with you to go to Jesus regularly in prayer. Come to the scribe of scribes, the teacher of teachers, the master rabbi, the master teacher and have a master class. And you could come to him personally in your closet of prayer somewhere by yourself. And as you read the Bible and as you pray, say, I say this all the time. I, you feel, you see how I'm emotional? <laughs> this is so good. Like I go right up to him and he's the teacher and he knows everything about everything. <laughs> what a teacher. You know, I have to pay money for this too. Like to go to colleges and to get professors and experts and all that. You got to go pay money, big time money. He's free and he offers it to you. He really wants to teach you all things. He said that, by the way, later. But I love that passage. I think it's Mark 4, 34, and where it says, And when he was alone with his disciples, he expounded, that's the word, expounded, taught all things to his disciples. And if you're a follower of Jesus, child or teenager or adult, I just want you to know that Jesus wants to be your teacher, personal teacher, expert. And he'll teach you right. The scribes didn't. The scribes and the Pharisees in the Bible. And nowadays, a lot of false teaching and all. So you come to Jesus and ask him what, what he wants you to do. Now, before we actually get into what a scribe is, and that's the main thing we're going to do, set it up so that you can appreciate and get more out of these stories if you know their background of these guys. Uh, we're going to go to Matthew, uh, I mean, Mark 12, and find out where it is. Yeah, here it is. It says, and one of the scribes, just one, came, and having heard them reasoning together, the discussion between the Sadducees and Jesus, it says, and perceiving, seeing that he had answered them well, what an answer. Remember what Jesus said, you know, about the uh, the scriptures and the you know, I am the God of Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, etc. So then he said, here's his question. I'll introduce it to you. It says, then he answered and uh, he said to him, what or which is the first commandment of all? He's not exactly saying what's the most important one. He's really saying which one is the top and maybe it's most important, but also 
supersedes all others. That's what that actual meaning is in the Greek there and the, uh, behind the English. So, but who is the scribe? What are scribes? Now, I don't know if you remember, I've talked to you a little bit about it. I actually mentioned a little bit earlier, but all through these videos. And now I'm going to give you a whole lot about scribes. It's really interesting. After I go through this list and I'll kind of go fast, hopefully you can listen fast. If you have to pause it, go back. I'm going to go through really quickly. I'll try and explain it. And then we're going to tell you, maybe in this video, unless I feel like, oh boy, this is going on and on, uh, we'll tell you how they became a scribe, the training of a scribe. And it started as a young person. Hmm. So right there, I want to slide this in and I'll talk about it later when we get to that. Child, I would encourage you to become a scribe, <laughs> not an actual professional teacher, although God could call you as a professional, t professional like college person to teach in Christian university and teach, you know, the Lord's word. But anyway, let's go with the scribe. This is little print, really small. It's about like this. No, it's a little bit larger than that. This is pretty good though. Okay, you ready? Yay! All right, quickly, I'm not gonna, I'm gonna skim across the top. Uh, the word really means write or writer, and it, 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 there's more meanings to that. Uh, and it also changed over time, like a lot of words do tend to change. But it started with writing. Uh, there's more to it, but let's just lightly say this. Now, this is the three main things that the scribe did. They preserved the law. And that means also they kind of preserved it by some of them wrote, uh, copied it. They didn't have printing machines and they didn't have copy machines and they didn't have texts and emails and, you know, and all that. So they had to prefer server somehow. Plus they passed it down, passed down the oral tradition. And in this time of Jesus, at this time, it was oral, it was written. Well, the Bible was written, some of it. Well, actually all of it. They compiled it later. But anyway, the Bible was written, but there was a word, oral tradition and teachings that were passed down over and over and they pass it down, you know, through the scribes. Uh, they also taught, a lot of the scribes taught. That's a major function that they did. They were teachers of the law. As a matter of fact, some of the translations of the different Bible says teachers of the law. So they were teachers of the Bible. I keep saying the law, primarily it was the first five books of the ball, of the Bible, <laughs> of the ball, <laughs> the law ball. It's Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deut Deuteronomy. They taught, especially the law, the Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Okay, here we go. They also administrated it. They administered it. And they kind of were kind of jurors, jurists or judges, and they administered. Also, also, they helped some of the judges, and we'll get to that later. They were kind of really top sort of bureaucrats, uh, bureaucracy. They were, you know, they wrote a lot. And all, and they had, they were, it's kind of like an office, the scribes were like, not an office, like a building office that you go into, but a position you kind of have to say an office, like the president of a, of a company is that's his office. That's his title. That's his position. Scribes had a lot of more, had an official office and position. They were definitely uh, supposed to be experts in the law. The problem is a lot of them, not all of them, a lot of them got their teachings wrong. I like this scribe. I do. I'll get to him later in like next videos. I like him. Be sure and listen to it. Like I, I like him. I think Jesus really did too, by the way. Uh, I, that's, yay, finally. It's not that difficult, which kind of proves to me that like what I've been saying it ever all this time for every time I do these videos on this, that not all of them were bad. Not all the scribes are bad, not all the Pharisees are bad, not all the Sadducees are bad, not all, well, actually the Sadducees, they didn't, they had some really whacked <laughs> teachings and all doctrines. I don't know, maybe there's some of them where they were ignorant of it, they just didn't know, I don't know, can't judge that completely, but uh, there's some bad teachings and all, all right. And Sanhedrin, um, I, the Pharisees, you know, a lot of them were pretty good. Some of them were pretty good. Well, this guy seemed to be pretty good. It seemed to be. All right, expert in the law. They definitely knew the Bible well, especially the Torah, which is the first five books of the Bible. The word Torah means instruction. So they were Torah teachers. They also knew the oral traditions outside of the Bible. There's all these rules and regulations and all. Now, they also practiced interpreting. They, were, they interpreted the many rules and regulations 
and how to apply it. They told people how to take the Bible and apply it to your life. How do you walk it out? How do you do it? Next one. They were professional. Most of them, or a lot of them are professional, not all. They had a professional skill or a vocation, or at least some of them. Okay, another one is they passed down the stuff orally. Well, I already said that, didn't I? They were copyists. Uh, they copied the, the Bible over and over and over so that there wouldn't be mistakes. By the way, if they made a mistake, they would throw the whole book away. If they made a, an error in the writing, they didn't have erasers at that time. So they're writing all this stuff, and they, if they made a mistake, they threw it away. That, that shows how meticulous, how how really good that we we definitely have the Bible as it's passed down to us because they made sure they wrote it right, they copied it right. Uh, low level, they, there were some low level officials. A lot of them were just low level. They weren't really high up, like in, someone weren't in the Sanhedrin. Um, most of them were from Jerusalem, although some of them were from Galilee. By the way, uh, all of them were, it, it seemed to be, at least in the Gospel of Mark, in the Gospels, Mark, let's say his, they were all um, from Jerusalem or in Jerusalem, except for two were mentioned in Galilee. They were Galileans. Okay, so there's scribes all over, but especially down in the Jerusalem area. All right, let's go on. They, uh, a lot of them were associates or assistants to the priests, or they were priests themselves. A lot of the priests really were scribes, and some say that if they if you didn't become a, a, if you didn't really become a scribe and you're just a priest, you're kind of a nobody, you know. The Sanhedrin, uh, oh, and they were associates and, and assistants of the Sanhedrin, or they were actually Sanhedrin themselves, and they weren't paid for that, by the way. It was volunteer work. Uh, the word lawyers in the New Testament and other places, other writings, are scribes. It's synonymous terms. Uh, they were also, I oh, already said this, didn't I? They were mainly in and from Jerusalem. Two times it was mentioned in Galilee. There we go. That wasn't too bad, was it? Pretty interesting, these guys like to know who they were. Uh, they were no girls, no females. It was all men. Um, the training of a scribe went down like this. This is really interesting. Ready? And we'll end with this, trying to hurry. Okay, the training of a scribe is they started at about 13 years old. Okay? Think about it, young teenager. Well, 13 was the age in that culture and in that time in some cultures nowadays where you actually are counted as a man. You're a son of the law. You're no longer a child. You become a man. Some of them got married pretty young too. <laughs> oh, we'll go into that some other time. But they were mature. I think they were more mature in my opinion. I can't tell for sure. I think they were far more mature than our young people nowadays. I'm sorry about that. It's not your fault, but it's just the culture doesn't expect as much from the youth. Ugh. All right, so they started about 13 years old. By the way, uh, a girl, I've said this before, I don't know if you remember this, or maybe you haven't heard me say this, a girl in the Jewish tradition, I don't, I don't think it's nowadays, I'm, I don't know, in some places it might be, uh, you could get married at 12 and a half years old plus one day. 12 and a half in a day, you can get married. Whoa, <laughs> that's amazing. All right, let's go on. They, uh, they, now, after, when they, uh, they started about 13 and they went to Jerusalem and they applied in the school of some famous rabbi. Rabbi means teacher. And so they would apply. They want like an application to get into that school. I don't know if, if how many came in, if they, if all of them or just a few or whatever. I don't know. I don't know if they had to pay money to get there. I don't know that yet. About 30 years old is when you actually ha uh, were admitted, you, you became a scribe, an actual scribe, at 30, about 30. Uh, there were choices to a, a whole variety of functions, or sometimes you can have a combination of two or three things you can do. Here are some of the things that you could do. You don't do them all. Like, it's just like doctor. You know, you, go to, you, you want to be a doctor. A doctor of what? a uh, bone, bone specialist, uh, a general practitioner, you know, just doctor of families, a child doctor, a uh, pregnancy doctor, you know. I mean, just all these various doctors. Well, this, this is what they could do. Here, they could become a doctor of the law. That's the one I would want, by the way, where you know the Bible and, and all that. Plus, you become a teacher there. And you, uh, sometimes you can become a judge of family, like, litigations and situations and all. So you become a judge. Uh, you become the head of a school. 
sort of like a principal, huh? And you become the main rabbi and everybody comes and listens to you. You're the student. I mean, you're teaching students. Or you can actually become a member of the Sanhedrin, which is 70 to 72 judges and all official people. Now, there are lower positions. These are pretty high ones. There's lower is like transcriber, like you copy the law. You copy it, which I've mentioned to earlier. Or they might become a notary, like you, uh, let's say someone is about to sign something, you can not notarize it to say, yep, this person has signed it. It's not a forgery, a fake signature. They were sort of officials, offices. There's that office official. Okay. Uh, they, write, they also did writing out of contracts of sales, like you wrote out a contract, like you, you, one person wants to sell a piece of land to another person. So they had to write out an agreement, kind of like people like that nowadays, there's notary public and all. All right. So writing out of contracts, they did. Another one is covenants of marriages, of espousals and all. So they actually wrote covenants out, like uh, uh, agreements in the, in the marriage. Bills, you know, they wrote certain bills for different people of different companies or whatever. All right. There you go. Woo. I hope that wasn't too boring for you. It wasn't boring for me. Very interesting. I love to know everything I can about the Bible. And these are just a few of the books that I get my um, understanding on and research because I'm not a scholar. I, you know, I, I don't go out and do that, but I dig, I reach, I pull out a lot of stuff from the scholars who study this. So, even without this, even though without the scholarly stuff and scribes, you can get so much out of the Bible. Most of it you should get out of here and not so much this. This is not as important as what it actually says. Now, in this case, I'm going to introduce it one more time. It says that one of the scribes came and having heard them reasoning together and perceiving that he had answered them well, asked him, which is the first commandment? And Jesus answered him. And that's where I'm going to stop right there. Ah. <laughs> so come back. Okay. God bless you. Thank you. Thanks for listening.